we have restrictions on South Africa and sanctions on Iraq. And even those weak restrictions imposed by our Congress call sections are being circumvented by President Bush. We are importing South African iron and steel into our country. We do not need it. American iron and steel workers are unemployed, and South Africa does not deserve the market. And yet, there is no cutoff date wherein Nelson Mandela might have the right to vote. January the 15th, we are not about to be attacked on tomorrow Vital resources to America are not about to be cut off on tomorrow. It's an artificial date of destiny, driven by ego needs and political needs, not national security needs. The artificial date reflects not national threat, but anxiety about the fragility of this business alliance called a worldwide coalition. If we truly support UN resolutions, which is a new idea for this administration, <laughs> Mr. Reagan, Mr. Bush would not pay UN dues in the 1980s. They tried to impose sanctions on the UN. <laughs> if we support the UN, let's pay them the $600 million that we owe them in back due. <laughs> so the UN can be used in Liberia and other nations around the world where it is needed. The UN has not imposed these sanctions. There has been no vote before the United Nations. 26 nations in the UN voted. China, which represents one fourth of the human race, did not vote. The Japanese offer some yen, the Germans some marks, but no people. Others are in it because of debt forgiveness or more weapons or brats or intimidation. It's not to be fear attack from Iraq tomorrow, we fear the, the fragile business alliance. We now hold that we shift from the terrorists to our fence. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., his legacy is a call to action. A call to leadership to not follow opinion polls, but to mold opinion. Vanity calls us to popularity. Politics calls us to expediency. Morality calls us to do the right thing. Bold leadership, new direction and action. The issue in the Middle East tonight should be the goal to get Iraq out of Kuwait, not the date. The focus must be the goal, not the date. The 
bombing would kill thousands of Kuwaitis, Iraqis, and Americans. It would invite world seduction in the war. The bombs fall on, on the Iraqis. If they hit or hit at Israel, it will respond in its interest. The new flood must fly over Jordan and Syria. They will respond. The war will not just be fought in the Middle East. The expression of it economically and militarily will be felt around the whole world. We're discussing a world war, not a limited strategic war, a limited surgical war. We could not employ surgical war against Panama if they didn't have an Air Force. <laughs> those who believe in surgical bombing, let them hold the building. Let them and their children hold the building while the bomber takes the building away and leave them standing. <laughs> those who believe in surgical war. And yes, if we win the bombing war, we then must remain and, and occupy that is we all. We must then occupy Kuwait and Iraq, as we're not doing Panama. If the war takes place, the price of oil will go up, the price of blood will go down. The many will die, the few will prosper. Worldwide economic inflation. Governments will be destabilized. Terror will strike the world. MIT, do the world a favor. Don't just protest war. Make war less likely by committing yourself to study war no more. <laughs> In the final analysis, we do what we say. That's why the ancient prophet Isaiah urged us centuries ago to study war no more and beat our souls to the plowshares. Make our weapons of war weapons weapon of, of development. Swords in the plowshares, spears in the pruning hooks, Isaiah talked about conversion. The war build up, the peace build up. Thousands of years ago, even then they recognized that the futility of war. War represents moral exhaustion, intellectual bankruptcy, when there is no thoughts left, when there is no hope left. We fight to reflect our emptiness and our lack of vision. If you study the teaching, you may not have a job in school, but whenever you go down the street and see children going towards school lesson plans come in your mind, you kind of do what you study. If you study law, you may choose not to be a practicing lawyer. Whenever you see a judge wrap his gavel, the sense of law that you study begins to come out. Somehow you want to do what you study.